Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life, and welcome to another knife making tutorial. The goal with this knife was just to kind of make knife making less boring. Do you guys ever get bored doing the things that you really enjoy doing, your hobby sometimes? Uh, I found that once I went full time with knife making, it, it actually it did turn into a job. I mean, it's a great job. I am doing something that I enjoy, but it is a job. And so every now and then, I've got to really kind of kick myself out of this little boredom rut that I fall into. And so that's kind of what this knife represents. I wanted to try something completely different than anything I've ever made before. And uh, I mean, obviously it's a knife and it's got handle scales and the processes are the same, but as far as the shape of it, uh, this is something I've never really tried and I've never even really been overly, I've never had a desire to try a knife like this, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm going to call this one the crooked finger. Now, just like I do most of my prototype knives, I kind of drew out a template based on stuff that I had in my head. And I uh, came up with an idea, put that onto paper, cut that paper out, use some adhesive, and glued it onto the steel. Now I showed early in the video, the steel that I'm going to use is O1 tool steel. And I do all my prototype work in O1 tool steel. It's not my favorite steel anymore. I still really enjoy it. It's a great steel. Uh, but I'm really, really falling uh, in love with a lot of these stainless steels, just for their wear resistance characteristics, obviously their stain resistance, and... Uh, some of those stainless steels, it is amazing at, at the edge retention that they have. It really, really blows my mind. So, cut everything out on the portable bandsaw, and then we profiled it with our belt grinder there. Uh, this is just some more of the profiling parts. We got the 10-inch contact wheel on here, and um, we're just kind of, you know, working that little that little curve part there. Make it kind of a, it's not really a clip point, I guess. Um, kind of a real, real pokey, stabby kind of a looking knife. And then uh, the last stage of the profiling process will be with the small wheel attachment here. Kind of get this finger groove all sorted out. And uh, using ceramic grits here. This one's a 50 grit. It's fairly worn out, but it works good for the rough profiling stuff. And then once we've got it profiled, I'll kind of draw in where I think the scale should end and leave that line there so I can visualize it. And then I will draw in where I think the two screws or pins or whatever we're going to use to hold uh, the scales to the knife. So uh, in this instance, we're going to use screws with the little standoffs inside there. I get a lot of questions where I get my handle hardware. Uh, I get all of mine from usanifemaker.com. I have no affiliation with them, uh, but that's where I buy it from. So you can check out the stuff. As far as sizing goes, there's so many different sizes and it all depends on what you're making. So have a look. You may need to go to the, the materials that you have, the, the stock that you work with and take some measurements. Uh, but they've got a lot of stuff there and it's really, really good. I don't know how competitive their prices are because <laughs> once I found that stuff, I haven't really shopped around for it. I just kind of use it because I know where I can get it from. So uh, I'm also drilling out a couple of holes, mostly for weight reduction. The way that we're going to grind this blade is going to take a lot of weight out of the blade portion, so I don't want the handle too heavy. And then with the G10, I mean, it's a fairly heavy material anyways. That's what we're going to be using for handle scales. And so I just wanted to, uh, to remove a little bit of weight from the handle just to kind of keep it a little bit more balanced. And then we used the uh, center scribe jig and marked in the lines that we're going to grind to. Uh, now, one thing I'm going to do with this knife that's a little bit interesting is I'm going to do the 36-inch radius platen, basically. So it's going to be a hollow grind, but you see the platen that we put on there. It's a 36-inch radius. So it's not, you know, most of my hollow grinds I do with like a 10-inch. Um, this is going to be much less pronounced. Almost, you can't even tell that it's a hollow grind. Uh, when you're setting up your grinder in this fashion, freehand grinding with this type of a platen is very difficult because as soon as your angle changes a little bit, it really changes uh, basically where the grind line is, where you're grinding on the bevel and stuff. So I find when I'm using these 36 inches, it's so much easier with the jig. So this was a simple jig that I, I did my rough grinding with. This is a piece of angle iron with a little jacking that I've been using this thing for years and years. And then we set this to about five degrees. Now I do have another type of jig that I'm going to use later on in the video, and that is a five degree jig too. Uh, but just for my rough grinding, that way I can, you know, use the vice grip, unclamp it back and forth really quickly. And we're going to go down to about maybe 40, 50 thou edge thickness. We're not getting too thin here, um, especially once we get up to the point of the blade there. I mean, that's there's not a lot of material there, and just kind of worried about warpages and stuff. So we're not getting crazy with the rough grinds, but we're definitely setting in our grinds there. Once we're heat treated, we'll go and clean everything up. And the belt that I'm using here is a 50 grit ceramic. Typically, I'll get about two knives of this size out of one belt, and then I'll just kind of retire that belt for profiling, but not use it anymore for uh, putting in bevels. So 
Uh, now we're going to heat treat this blade. Uh, with my 01 tool steel, I take it to 1600 degrees because I find that it, the, the distance between the oven and the oil, it cools down so much. You know, if I take it to 1450 or 1500, I'll quench it and I'll take a file to it and it is not hard. Like the file will cut into it like nothing. And uh, just, I don't know, it could be my, it could be my kiln too, right? It might be kind of off. And so I go to 1600 degrees and that's what I take it up to and then quench it. Uh, before I do any temper cycles, I'm throwing it in liquid nitrogen. Uh, the big advantage, even with the carbon steels, like this is a one tool steel. I mean, for a lot of stainless steels, you really do need the cryo to get the most performance out of them. But all stainless, all steels, sorry, benefit from a cryogenic treatment. And uh, with the 01, a lot of high carbon steels, I've, I've done a lot of research from a lot of very reputable sources. I mean, I haven't, I don't have a laboratory and I can't test this myself. So you kind of pick and choose where you get your information. But from the things that I've looked into and read, uh, you can get like a 400% increase in wear resistance on 01 tool steel with a cryogenic treatment. And uh, so that, that to me makes it worth it. And I can actually tell a difference. I can notice a difference in the wear resistance, uh, especially when it comes down to my finish grinding. It grinds much slower after cryo. So that's why pretty much every single knife I make now gets a deep cryogenic treatment. And then here's that second jig that I was talking about. This is a piece of just like bar stock. I think this is a three quarter inch by one inch piece of steel bar. And I machined a five degree bevel into it. And then I've got a hole tapped in there that I can actually bolt the knife too through the tang and I like to use this for my finish grinds because it's a little little easier in the hands I can kind of finesse things and a lot of times I find that when I'm finished grinding sometimes you're literally just touching on a certain area right it's not like you know when I'm doing my rough grinds typically I'll start at the plunge line and it's a full drag across the blade to the tip plunge line full drag but I find when I'm often doing a lot of these cleanup things you'll kind of look back and forth between the two sides and a lot of times I'm like, okay, I'm just going to work this part of the belly uh, just a few passes here and there. And uh, often I'll go back and forth between one side to another just to keep the geometry right and make sure everything, all the lines line up properly. Um, but I find this jig works really well for that. Uh, it's really quick to switch back and forth, but it's a lot of, uh, lot of control in the hand with the way that I can hold it. Now after heat treat, my grinding progression is a 120 grit ceramic belt, that's what I go to. And then from there, I'll go to a A65 Trizact belt, that's what I'm switching out to right here. Kind of finish everything else, right here is where I'll really concentrate on the plunge line, make sure I have the same radius on each side. Make sure that uh, the, the grind line, the bevel line is really nice and flat. And I find a lot of times if I'm having little wiggles here and there, just minor ones, I can, I can kind of fix them a lot better on these Trizac belts than I can on the ceramic. And I don't know if that's just kind of like my mindset or if it actually is a little bit easier, a little more forgiving. Uh, but that's definitely what I do. I don't really spend too much time getting everything perfect with the ceramic belts. I put the Trizac on and these are kind of like my cleanup belts where I really start worrying about the details. And then once I've got everything cleaned up on the Trizac belts, uh, I'll usually finish up with a Scotch-Brite belt. And this is a fine grit Scotch-Brite belt. And this is like the ultimate level of blending and, and kind of forgiveness. But you still get to maintain those grind lines from the grinder. And right here is like a half speed shot. You can see it's a really nice satin finish, but it's still a belt finish. And I really, I really love that. You know, I hand sand sometimes. It's not my favorite thing to do, but I love sometimes when you can, you know, you figure out the process and the steps that you that you need to get a good belt finish for the way you grind your knives. So uh, for me, post heat treat, it's 120, A65 uh, on the Trizact, and then the scotch Brite belts, and that works really well. And now what I'm doing right here is cleaning up the flats on the Trizact. Now, for you to take a scotch Brite belt and do this, you would end up putting scratch lines into your bevels. Uh, so when I'm cleaning up the flats, I always just finish at the A65. It's a little bit coarser and it looks a little coarser than the bevels, but I think that's okay. It doesn't bother me that much. Still really nice and clean. Um, you know, not really heavy lines. Once we've invested all that time in the bevels, we'll tape up the knife, protect those bevels. And then I'm just going to pick which type of material I want to use. And I really had no clue. Kind of wandered around thinking, what am I going to use? And I ended up settling on just plain G10 with a red G10 liner. And the idea behind this knife, what I'd wanted to try to do was uh, very clean, hard lines. You know, I wasn't doing a lot of contouring on this. I wasn't going to you know, make it really comfortable or anything. I mean, it feels great in the hand, don't get me wrong. It's not like an uncomfortable knife, but I wanted it to be very simple. So essentially I'm gonna cut out the profile, but what I wanted to do with the handle portion of this was to try to get a really clean, very consistent, just execute a 45 degrees really well. And you'll see at the end of the video or when we reveal the knife, I think it's amazing when you take something as simple as just like a monocolor G10 
but you put the time into it and get it right, it actually, you know, in itself, it stands out well. It can hold its own. I mean, it's a great looking handle when it's all said and done. But really, there's absolutely nothing special about it. It's not one of these beautiful burls or some fancy type of, you know, composite or anything. It's just a piece of black G10 that is very lightly sculpted. It's got 45s on it, but it's been done well, uh, at least in my opinion. I mean, you know, I put a lot of work into this thing, and uh, I think it's amazing. It's, it's a good lesson sometimes. You know, you can do something very simple, but if you do it properly, it can look really, really good. So uh, what I'm doing here is post glue up. We just epoxy these two pieces together and then flatten them out a little bit. Once I cut them to size, I'll flatten them a little bit more, but I had some big hangy globs of epoxy that I need to get rid of before I could even make a decent cut on these. So kind of mark roughly what size we wanted this to be. And rather than gluing up like two separate sets of handle scales, like the right side and the left side, I thought I'll just glue this whole piece up together and then cut it in half. Definitely works well. And then now that we've got that done, now we'll go ahead and get it nice and flat, clean it up. I get a lot of questions on what is it that I clean the belts with, and those are just called a rubber cleaning stick, a little abrasive rubber stick. A lot of places that sell sanding materials and supplies abrasives sell those. It's just like a really, really soft rubber, and it just kind of cleans out the little valleys of your abrasives so that they, they cut faster for longer. It's not like it makes them last longer, but they just cut better throughout their life. So uh, once we've got those flattened up, now I'm just going to take my uh, two pieces, stack them so that the insides are touching the inside and the outsides are to the outside, and then place the knife on top of that. And then we're just going to use some cant twist clamps to kind of lock everything down and drill it. I know a lot of people like to drill one scale at a time. I used to always do that. But I love this method because, first of all, if I was using pins, I don't need to pre-cut any pins. Um, and then also, like, for something like this, uh, when I'm not using pins, um, you know, I can just kind of drill holes. I'm just kind of marking my quarter-inch hole so we can transfer the exact location. And then what I'm doing is I'm drilling the diameter of the screws that's going to go in there. And this will kind of make sense once you see us kind of bolting the knife together. Now, the one thing with drilling one scale at a time in a drill press, if you're using a set of, say, burl scales that are kind of matched, like bookmarked scales, it's really hard to get them exact, whereas you can stack them on top of each other, line everything up, put the blade on top, clamp it all together, and you know that those pins are going to go through pretty much the same part. So I find, especially when you're using different, uh, you know, woods and, and scales that have some grain that you want to keep lined up, clamping them together is by far the best way to go about it. At least that's what I've experienced. So now I've kind of just traced out, described out with a line, the general outline of the uh, knife there. We can kind of trim off some of the excess G10. We're not going to get it too close right now because we're going to finally profile it to the tang of the knife itself, but just get it sort of close. And then what we're going to do here is just counter bore a quarter inch hole. And this is just going to be a little bit of a recess where the little standoff, the little threaded aluminum portion that we put into the handle, that's going to be the clearance for that. And then on the other side, what we're doing here is we're countersinking just deep enough so that the screws will sit flush and they won't be sticking out into the handle at all. And it's a little bit of just kind of fitting it up, drilling a little deeper, and then using whatever means you can. It could be a stop on your drill press. I'm just using the dial indicator gauge on my milling machine here. But you just want to kind of control the depth from one side to the other and keep things fairly consistent. And now that we've got that fit up there, we can lock everything down and start grinding that G10 to the tang of the knife. And I'm using my 10 inch contact wheel here with a work rest and that work rest is exactly 90 degrees to the surface of the contact wheel. And I find that's really nice rather than I used to kind of hold it, you know, and grind vertically, look down it. This is really nice because I know everything's flat and true. Again here, this work rest on my small wheel holder, it's perfectly 90 degrees. And it's really nice when I can just worry about keeping the thing flat, grinding all the G10 to the tang and knowing that I've got a nice even you know, basically all square edges to work from. I think that's really, really important. I've noticed a huge improvement when I've started using these work rests. And then when I was setting up these work rests, I was being very, very fussy when I made them to make sure that they were exactly 90 degrees to the grinding surface. So now that we've got that done, we're going to take out the blade and then we're just going to finish up the part, uh, the upper part there, um, just at 45 degrees there, clean those up, shape them on the belt grinder, and then we're going to finish them up by hand. And, uh, you know, the nice thing with the bolt-on scales is that you can kind of adjust this, put it back on the blade, see if you like it or not, you know, adjust it, put it back on, back and forth. It's not like when you're gluing the scales on where this part has to be completely finished. You can kind of keep tweaking it and then you can polish and buff out the scales and sand them up to their grits um, as you go. And then at the very end, obviously put them on the knife. So what I'm doing right here is marking out where I want to grind that 45 degrees to. And I'm just using a little ruler there, stainless steel ruler, just to kind of shim it up a bit. And then leaving a pencil flat on the granite surface plate to mark in my line. 
And then this was the work rest that I made, the adjustable articulating work rest. And I've got this exactly at 45 degrees and we're just grinding everything into that. I'm taking everything on a 80 grit belt here. With the G10, I mean, it's a softer material. It's not hard to sand. So really I took this to 80 grit on my profiling and then I finished everything up by hand from there. So from 80, I went to 220, 400, 800. And then we actually went up to a thousand grit and then we buffed these scales. So really, really was fairly quick shaping all these. The hardest part, the part that I had to focus the hardest on uh, was the inside radius. And that's what I set up the small wheel for. And then again, I had a, a work rest on there. Unfortunately, I mean, looking at the footage afterwards, you can't see any of the grinding. My hands are right in the way. Uh, There's a little, little work rest I had for a five inch contact wheel. So I just switch out that main arm and put the work rest on that I need. And so this is for the, uh, small wheels and again there's my fingers you can see exactly yes my fingers are doing a great job here can't see any of the grinding going on but uh this was a part that i really had to focus on and it's weird because you, you almost can't really see very well what's going on so it's kind of like a light grind and look and a light grind and look this part was a little bit frustrating for me because i like things to go quicker than this did but i found that you know when i was looking and grinding i mean i had to go so slow i had to take so many passes uh just because i couldn't really see what was going on when i was grinding but we eventually got it right and then we put this thing together and the reason I bolted everything together uh, for finish sanding is that way I can put it into my little knife maker's vise. Uh, this way I can kind of rotate it, you know, tilt it up and down wherever I want. I've got both sets of scales. The only part that I couldn't work on here was at the, the Ricasso area. Uh, but everything else I sanded up first. And this little vise works really good. And then again, you know, if I need to kind of correct things, I can always take these scales off, do a little bit more work to them. But having them on the knife like this makes it really easy to, you know, I've got good traction. They're, they're rigid and I can sand. I can move them around, do whatever I like. Works really, really well. And the nice thing with this too is that I really don't have to do any work on the parts that we've ground to the tang. So basically, you know, all, all along the spine where the spine comes into the handle there, I'm not touching that now. Like I finished that on the belt grinder. Uh, I don't need to be rounding anything over, so I don't need to worry about that getting scratched up. And this was actually really, really nice. Uh, very, the very systematic way of doing handle scales. And again, I, I just really want to focus on getting really great straight lines. Uh, keeping everything flat so we've got a consistent 45 degrees everywhere and uh, the overall result I'm, I'm really quite happy with it very very simple very elegant kind of tactical I guess sort of I mean it's not I say elegant but um, I don't know I was, I was really happy with the way these turned out and then I'm just using my buffing wheel the one thing I forgot to film was I had a regular buffing wheel with some black compound just to kind of smooth everything over with a G10 you do need to be a little bit careful because you can actually do some material removal with a buffing wheel and, and compound uh, so it's not like you're really hogging material off there but just kind of really smoothing everything in, blending it all in and then the last step that I did to these scales was use some Meguiar's 20x scratch remover and this was after I'd taken up to a thousand grit and then I just did a really really soft mop you know these little buffing wheels this is the kind that's not sewn together at all so it's literally just you know a couple inches of flexible fabric and this is essentially just giving a really quick buff to get a nice shine on the scales and then after it's all said and done really really nice the way that g10 finishes out with the scratch remover i'm sure you could use other brands i just use mcguire's uh, but it just does a fantastic job of just putting a really nice sheen on there and here you can kind of see the execution that i was going for simple lines it's just a 45 but i wanted it to be a 45 done uh, you know where you'd have to look for a heck of a long time to find a flaw in there and uh, really really happy with the way it turned out now speaking of flaws I mean this is <laughs> I'm doing an acid stone wash this is a great way to hide flaws <laughs> in your knives uh, but I honestly love knives I love acid stone washes I know they're kind of a personal preference thing a lot of people hate them um, I, actually I'll, I'll let you know a little secret here it's coming in the video when I was making this knife I did one of them with an acid stone wash in 01 tool steel and the other one I did in nitro V and I did not do an acid stone wash uh, just a metal finish so it went two different directions uh, with the same knife it's kind of fun I just you know kind of doing it while I was, was going on here to keep it interesting but uh, anyways this one is the main build that we're following here uh, I, I didn't plan on doing the other knife I was just kind of kind of into this one I thought you know what I mean I really love the shape of it after I'd profiled it and roughed in my bevels I thought I really like this I'm going to do another one really quick so I'd already started filming this one and I thought we'll follow this build along but I'm going to show you that other knife momentarily so we throw the sucker in here we got the rocks going on in here this was a little tumbler that I made and uh, literally it's just gravel in there I tumble for about 20 minutes and that just does a good job at putting enough random scratches in there 
The one nice thing I really like about the acid stone washed is that uh, for an EDC type knife, a knife that's going to be used a lot, they, they do a great job of hiding, um, you know, the little, if you drop it on gravel, you might get the little errant scratch here and there, but it's going to kind of blend in far more so than if you just have like a mono finish, you know, a sanded finish or a hand sanded finish or whatever. So now I like to always put my maker's mark on my knives and a lot of times with a removable scale, I'll often hide the maker's mark. So I'm actually etching this into the steel, but it's going to be underneath the handle. It's still there. You know, if somebody wants to say, is that a homestead knife? Yes, they can look and find my logo. Um, but I didn't want it to distract from the lines of the knife, mostly for my own reasons is because, you know, this is a profile and a shape that I've never made before. And when I look at it and evaluate it when it's all said and done, whether I like it or not, I don't want anything to take away uh, from what my eyes see, including my logo. I just want to see the shape of the knife. I want to see where the plunge line is, where the bevel is and uh you know not be distracted so that's why i decided to hide the the knife or the logo on this knife here and i did the exact same thing with this one this is that other knife that i was talking about so this is 3 16 inch thick nitro v stainless steel the other knife that we were working on was a 1 8 inch 01 tool steel and then again we've got these burl scales here with a composite it's actually a glow in the dark kind of carbon fiber composite stuff two completely different directions with the same blade profile and i thought it was actually it's actually really fun to kind of work on these and finish them up at the same time uh this one here i put a swedge or a false top like a false edge on the top there just purely for the aesthetics of it so there's a line that you could look at and it's really interesting to see you know uh these things side by side they, the, you know this one's a beautiful slicer it's a little thinner uh, almost more utilitarian. The other one feels more like a showpiece. I ended up sharpening this one. I, I didn't film it. I took this to the paper wheels and it literally took just a few passes because I ended up grinding this to about 10 thousandths of an inch at the edge uh, after heat treat. But um, really, really nice sharp knife and uh, really happy with the way that this one turned out. Here's some beauty shots of the blade very very clean uh this next shot here you'll see you see like just those lines that's what i was going for i was going for just just really subtle nothing fancy but almost uh, i almost wanted to look like a factory knife right like to people say wow this was a cnc machine that did it and it's like no that was me freehand grinding on my belt grinder um so that was kind of the goal and then this one we took similar styling cues up at the the top there where it meets the blade but went in a completely different direction and i'm really happy with the way this one turned out too we had some really great grinds this was a really good grind for me uh the swage was done all freehand there again the bevels on this knife were done with the jig just because of that 36 inches it's weird and i'm still getting used to it but uh, at the end of the day we've got two knives that are the same knife done very different ways and it was a lot of fun anyways guys it was a lot of fun to share this with you i hope you got something out of it and i hope you really enjoyed the video and as always i thank you so much for watching cheers mm -hmm.